she was busy. She got around town. She really got in, herself involved in the community. Involved. You know, the, that your daughter's helped with, you know. And he's uh, Coral Bernal from the Pueblo, you know, Parker's daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of different people, different walks. And so, the, so how long have you been doing this uh, market? We've been, this is the sixth year here at the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and uh, we, we've been um, pretty successful over the years, you know, and, and it, it depends on the year, but it, I think what's going on here is that people really have a tendency to, um, you know, people call expecting to see a Spanish bar, because some people come here expecting to see a lot of artists, but... Um, I tell them, well, you know, the paper, what I put in the paper purposely is that I'm celebrating the Spanish market here. This is also in celebration, too, of the uh, mural that you did. Okay, this is the 25th year of the, of the uh, Santero of the mural in the middle of town mm -hmm. at uh, Cabo Plaza. And this is uh, actually a, an original postcard that Jill Caven took the photograph for. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so I published, we published this years ago, so this is like when it's brand new. This How did that mur mural come about? The mural came about when I, I, I wanted, I, well, the wall, I liked the wall. And uh, I thought the tower was a very interesting wall and the challenge. And so I approached the uh, owners of the building, the Cabo Plaza. And it's called Cabot Enterprises. I had no idea who owned the building then. It turns out to be a woman named Maya Chacon and Mary Chacon, and she was married to a Chacon family, not related, and... Uh, but your family comes from Colorado. My fa I was born in Sawatch, Colorado, but my grandfather's from this area. So there's a quite possibility that our, our, we have common great-grandfathers, you know, probably more than likely because there's a lot of similarities in the family looks. But anyway, the, the whole thing is that Maya was married to Chacon. She was Cabot, and so it's Cabot Enterprises. And uh, they allowed me to do the wall, the mural, and I sought out community support and I went to the town and asked them permission and we went to three public hearings and we won. And then I got to paint the mural. Uh, so after the town approved it, uh, I got a letter from the Cabot Plaza's, uh, Cabot Enterprises saying you can paint the mural. And I, it was my responsibility to take care of the politics and the monies to um, paint it and I did a community fundraiser and so there's a plaque there that gives credit to the people who helped fund the mural and uh, actually uh, Sentinel Bank and Larry Bell and quite a few other people and then we had a lot of small donations and stuff like that so that's how the mural came about. It took six months of politicking and then the winter came and then I painted the mural in about three and a half weeks uh, in June, starting after Memorial Day. Did you do it of all by yourself? And I did. I, I did. I, I had a couple of people come for a couple, for one day, one afternoon, and help me on the flowers. There were some friends, some painter friends. So right now, there, there's a little bit of work that I want to do to it before the uh, summer's over. That looks like on the top there, it's peeling down. But uh, I think that that has to do more again with that new plaster stuff. So. And uh, so now it's, it's still there, fortunately, and I have about 70, 75 other murals in the Taos area. So it's a celebration of a quiet sorts. Right. <laughs> so. One of the things I wanted to, to ask you is that, um, you know, the, the fiestas just concluded here in Taos. Right. And um, some of the comments that I've heard from people who've attended the fiesta um, we're a little bit critical about the way they seem to be this year, mm -hmm. and um, and you know, I just wanted to see what you might think about how the fiestas might be improved. Oh, well, for the future. You know, the one thing I did like seeing was seating area mm -hmm. instead of those booths that they used to have. With the there was a lot of mostly. Children attracted uh, booths that attracted to children's consumerism, right? T-shirts and all that stuff like that. And there was a less booths this year, and there was a seating area for people. I thought that was really a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I didn't see more booths with local 
vendors or people. Uh, I saw a few food stands that were some local people, but I, most of them, again, were from out of the area. I saw a lot less booths this year, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them were still showing, uh, selling the, uh, you know, the carnival stuff. Right. You know, uh, it would be nice if the Fiesta Council would start to ask and include and maybe even find sponsorship for booths that local artists can show, tell us artists. Not necessarily Hispanic, just our Hispanic or whatever, but any artists that might show interest, you know, that, that uh, and uh, maybe for a uh, minimal fee or something like this, because I know that the booths are expensive. And I think that that might be the, one of the things that keeps artists from trying to sell or craftsmen from selling their local tra craftsmen, because uh, a lot of those people travel from town to town doing fiestas and carnivals, and uh, you can't compete with that kind of, you know, it's just a mass marketing thing. So that, I think that would be a major improvement. I think the local foods are always a hit. You know, I, of course, that's pretty much all you can get is local food there. But uh, uh, I think some elements of the farmer's market would be good in there too. Well, many years ago, you were head of the House Hispanic Arts Council. Yeah. Um, do you think maybe something like that could ever be revived again? You know, people people uh, um, ask about that, and one of the things that I found when I was when it kind of dwindled out was that it people just weren't interested in putting time and effort in. You know, and that was the hard part. But also that uh, every, like me, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm an individual, independent person, and and uh, people in Taos seem to have a tendency to want to be that way. I'm not sure. I, I, I like just putting my little thing up here was a lot of work and it's going to continue to be a lot of work. Uh, but if you add 20 or 30 more people that kind of don't carry the weight, if you can find a group of people that are willing to put the work in, I think it's a, it's a doable thing. But, uh, uh, I think you I know that, uh, uh you've always, um, thought the idea of having one during the fiestas was a good idea. A uh, Hispanic, uh, Hispanic fair. Arts Fair. But the Hispanic Arts Council, I think the Talpa community people, I think they're a really good example. I think probably that's a mixed people, but I mean, they, they, they represent a lot of Hispanic people around here. And I think that's one organization that has really been doing a good job. You know, they, they have a, a, a gallery on the plaza at the courthouse. And I think that that's really one organization that has been successful and, and in their intentions of having the community center, having arts and crafts fairs and all that kind of stuff, I think that's, that's a good example of how grassroots things have happened and are happening. And I think that's one though, that's the only one I could think of. But, you know, not a lot of people are, are uh, aware, aware of what, how well they're doing, but I think, I don't know how well they're doing for the artists wise, but I think they're doing good for exposure of, of the community for sure. You know, mm -hmm. so. But um, we'll see if it could ever happen again. <laughs> well, it all comes down to, to participation, no matter what. Participation and help and organizing, yes. And commitment. And commitment and planning and grant writing is a tough one, especially nowadays. Yeah. The economics. Okay. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rick.